for and I'm really excited this week because I'm doing a special request. So thanks to Laura who's one of my biggest fans for sending me this via my Instagram DMs. She had a request for me to DIY it for her because she hasn't been able to find one that looks just like that uh, in store and she thought maybe I could show her how to make it. And if you ever have something like that, either you see something in store and it's too expensive or you saw it online and you can't seem to find it anywhere to buy it yourself, shoot me a message about it with a photo and who knows, I might be able to make it for you. So you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter to get in touch with me. So this week I'm going to attempt to recreate that beautiful tray and hopefully I do it justice. So in front of me, I already have all of my wood cut out to the particular lengths that I need. I will get to that in just a few moments, but I do want to tell you that this isn't exactly the cheapest project because all of the wood that you're purchasing, you're going to have a lot left over. So my suggestion would be to get a friend over, have some wine, and you can both make these boxes for basically the same price. The only additional cost is going to be buying the extra handles. Mine were about $5 a piece, so those are kind of expensive, but all of the wood that you need for this project could probably run you, oh, I would say like around 20-ish dollars, but you can get two boxes out of that. So what you're going to need is a one by six, you'll also need a one by three, and uh, a one by two, and depending on how big you make those uh, boxes, It'll depend on how long you need to purchase those lengths in. But uh, the one by six here, I have it measured out to 20 and a half inches. The one by threes are 22 inches long and my one by twos are five and a half inches long. So I'll show you kind of how these get put together. The one by twos are the edge pieces so they will be the same length as the width of your bottom board and then the long one by threes go up along the sides so it really depends on the length of wood that you're working with because as you can see I've added an inch to either side of the base which is um, 20 inches long and that's to accommodate for the pieces on the side there. So I've kind of given these a rough sand already on each of the edges where I cut and just along the boards as well. But what I'm going to do is kind of round out any of the pointier edges for the pieces of the shelves that are going to stick up like this because they kind of look like that in the photo that I saw. So these are going to get a little bit rounded out with just my hand sander. So honestly, the rougher the better with this. It's kind of an antique farmhouse look that we're going with. So I'm also going to take my hammer and kind of beat the wood up a little bit. Kind of like get it dense. Scratches. So you can kind of see how you can rough up the wood a little bit, give it an aged look. So I decided to use some finishing nails instead of screws. They'll be small, um, not that noticeable, and I think might add to the overall look. So essentially you're just going to hammer everything into place. This would be ideal to have a friend. So after that, you're just going to nail these boards in place and honestly don't worry if this isn't perfect i think it's kind of a bit of a rustic look but um my boards don't line up as perfectly as i'd like them to but we're going to do our bass nail into here and then of course along the sides of the board and towards the back just make sure that you're not nailing directly into where that nail is so you're going to have to be up a little bit Okay, so before I move on to the next step, which is essentially just adding the handles to the side here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this all up and then we're going to kind of antique it a little bit after with some roughing of like the sandpaper and everything. But I'm gonna give it a nice coat of paint and I just so happen to have paint from my living room when I moved in and painted. So I figured it'd probably be 
you know, good to use and it actually kind of matches the exact photo that Laura sent me on Instagram. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a nice coat of paint. If I did get this, oh my! Uh, oh yes, all right. I've actually propped mine up just ever so slightly with just a few rolls of wire that I have. That way I can kind of paint underneath it and I don't have to flip it and worry about that. I just don't even care if the bottom's painted because no one's gonna see it. Okay, so I allowed this to dry overnight and next I'm just gonna go ahead and take some fairly rough sandpaper and then again, scratch this all up to give it a more rustic, barn house kind of style. And really you can be as rough as you want with this. Ideally you wanna try and take off some of the paint. Okay, so once you've kind of roughed it up to your liking, you're gonna go ahead and take your handles that you picked up. This is the handle that I picked up and it came with shorter and longer screws. And part of the reason why I made this piece shorter is so that it makes it easier when attaching the screws on the other end. Still, however, as you can see, these are not going to be long enough. So I have a plan on how to uh, make this work with this piece of wood with my drill. You'll also notice that this kind of sticks out. So to allow that to actually sit flush, because right now it's kind of sitting on the top, for it to sit flush on the wood, I'll let you know how I kind of uh, solved that problem. So first things first is we gotta measure where exactly this is going to go. I want it to be right in the middle. So we gotta figure out where our holes need to be. And I'm just gonna kinda push that in. And you can see, I can see little tiny indents where the holes are exactly. And make sure you put a piece of wood underneath just in case you end up going all the way through. But what I've done is I've paired my bit with how wide my screw is. So first we're gonna make those holes. And as you can see, my screw fits in there perfectly. So that's what we need. But this piece here is a little bit bigger than what those holes are. So for the first, just little tiny bit, we're actually going to drill in an even bigger hole so that this part will actually go inside of that hole and sit flush. Inside of there, and then it'll be flush once we screw in the screws on the other end. So the other problem is, is that these screws are not long enough to reach. So we have to do this on the other side as well so that the head of the screw can actually go inside. So I managed to get this hole big enough for the head of the screw to actually go in and it can be buried and it's going to be just long enough to reach the other side of this and um, attach securely. So just gonna screw that into place and to know that it's actually hitting the other side and connecting, you'll actually feel it with the screw. You'll feel that it starts to get tighter until the point that you can't turn it anymore and then you know that it's actually connected. So it does have to get pr buried pretty deeply because normally cupboards and handles aren't like that. But it's in there good. And as you can see, it's attached really well and you can actually use this as a real tray. So I actually had a ton of fun putting this project together and thank you to Laura who originally sparked the idea with this DM. She wanted to see if I could create this so she could do it at home. Uh, I think it did a pretty good job, but let me know how you think I did recreating that project. You can let me know down in the comments below. Laura, I hope this helps you or inspires you to do your own DIY at home. And if you ever see anything, um, you know, on the internet or in store that 
you'd like to see me try and make so that it can help you at home do the project as well, shoot me a DM with a photo just like Laura did on Instagram and on Twitter. You can follow me at Janelle Steeper. And also, keep in mind, I always want to see what you're making, so maybe this is a DIY that you attempt. So send me some photos of what it looks like when you're done. Uh, you can follow me again on Instagram and on Twitter at Janelle Steeper and just tag me in those photos. And uh, I, I love this project. I'm so happy Laura sent this to me. I think it's a great piece for, uh, you know, a centerpiece at a table. You can change it out with the seasons, kind of like the different decor, and it can work all year round. And uh, the other thing I love about this project is that it's a great one to do with a friend. So the thing is, is that I spent about $30 on this project. However, you could spend 40 and make two trays. It's just because the wood that you're going to be purchasing, you have to buy that much. You can't buy smaller amounts of it. So you get a, a few extra handles and then you can make two of these trays, either do the project with a friend or you could make one for yourself and, and make another one as a gift for somebody maybe. So let me know what you thought of this DIY uh, and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe. Next Wednesday, I start with Halloween costumes, which I'm so excited about. It's like my favorite time of the year in DIY world. And I've got a couple of Halloween costumes I'm excited about this year. I haven't started and hopefully they go well. But next Wednesday, I'll have my first one out for you. So subscribe so you don't miss that video. Cheers and I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Thank you.